Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video. Uh, I have not uploaded in a while because I did not want to overwork myself and burn out. So I've crafted this little video to satiate you on a topic that I found interesting and it becomes more and more interesting as time marches forward. I've lured you all here with an intriguing, maybe eye-catching, maybe naughty thumbnail. Maybe it's a mysterious video title that you could not help but click on. Maybe you just wanted to watch the video because you want to support me. Any of those options are valid. Today, we are talking about fan service. I'm sure the first thing that popped into your head when I said that was this. Oh yeah, sorry. I know, I know, we'll get there, it's on the list. I will talk about it, I promise. I wouldn't really be able to talk about this topic without that. I know I'll get there, I will get there. We all know what fan service is. Even if you don't think you know what fan service is, you do. It's almost impossible to not come across fan service because it's so entrenched in our culture, in our society, society. <laughs> Even if you don't think you've experienced fan service, you have. It is an inevitability that you have. Trust me. Fan service is everywhere. And one thing I've really noticed while gathering information for this video was not everyone can really put their finger on what fan service is. And I really wanted to make this video to make it a little easier for everyone to be able to tell what fan service is and point their finger and go, that's it. So let's pull up the definition real quick. Definition. Fan service or service cut is material in a work of fiction or in a fictional series that is intentionally added to please the audience, often sexual in nature, such as nudity. So that's a pretty broad term, I'd say. So what I want to do with this video is break it down into categories, categorize fan service, and be able to point to it and say, that's good, that's bad, or maybe a little in between. And I want to see if it's overall getting worse or better over time. Spoiler warning, the following things. Okay, so are we in the midst of a fan service overload? Let's find out. References used as... References used as fan... Why is it so hard for me to say references? References. 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 References used as fan service are one of the most common types you will find, and the first category of references can be broken down into three subcategories. References to source material can often be harmless, and most of the time they end up going over the heads of most of the people witnessing them. A harmless example, for instance, would be in a Batman movie, for example, where his costume is reminiscent of a costume he wears in the comics, such as Batman vs Superman, The Dark Knight Rises. Same costume. <laughs> Reference to source material. That's an incredibly harmless example, doesn't upset anyone, maybe it pleases the fans, fans are serviced, you know what I'm saying. A slightly more in-depth example can be found in Dune 2021. In one scene, a small desert mouse can be seen hopping across the sands and across the screen. This would most likely mean absolutely nothing to anyone who had not read the book or seen a previous adaptation of Dune. This little mouse is actually where Paul Atreides, our protagonist in this film, finds inspiration for his Fremen name, Muad'Dib. I would classify these references to source material as good fan service. Anyone unfamiliar with the source material is not taken out of the film and distracted, and anyone who is familiar with the source material is given a little treat. These moments don't halt the story and they logically make sense as to why they would be there. A kangaroo desert mouse would be seen in the desert. Uh, Batman wears a bat suit. That one's, yeah, obvious. Although, why is he wearing a trench coat? Why are you wearing a trench coat in the desert? It looks really stupid. Snyder people get mad. I don't care. They su it sucks. BBS sucks. But a kangaroo mouse is there and it meshes with the wildlife, so it makes sense. Another good example would be the fight scene between Captain America and the Winter Soldier in Captain America and the Winter Soldier. The shield is pulled away from Cap, and for the briefest moment, 
the Winter Soldier holds it. I believe it's two seconds in frame. Holds it in frame on his arm. This is a reference to Bucky in the comics eventually taking over the mantle of Captain America. They actually carry over this storyline in the Falcon and Winter Soldier series. Similar adaptation going on there. And once again, it does not distract and it meshes with the story and what's going on. It's the briefest moment. It, it makes sense logically for anyone that does not know the source material. Pop culture references are references to pop culture. I know, right? Who would have guessed? These will often bring up reference to another film, a video game, a book, a myriad of things. However, these can often date your artwork or piece of media you're making. The Shrek franchise is filled to the brim with pop culture references, ranging from WWE, the, chair, the, chair. the Matrix, Alien, Mission Impossible. This is going to be debatable, but honestly, I love the use of pop culture references in Shrek. It does date the film. It feels like a film that was made in the year it was made. But I love it. I just love it. It's like a time capsule into the early 2000s, and I love it for everything it is. It sometimes feels really hard to define why I dislike or like a pop culture reference, but the only thing I can really define is if it pisses me off or not. I think the main reason with Shrek is that it's trying to tell a good story and have fun, and it's a little tongue-in-cheek, and it doesn't give itself this massive self-importance. The tone of Shrek is very tongue-in-cheek as well, which obviously helps with all the silly references they're throwing in. The references don't get in the way of the movie's goal. That's it. A movie where the pop culture references get in the way of the movie's goals can be found on full display in its entirety in the film I feel bad saying it's even a film. Ready Player One. I'm not gonna lie, my mind was blown while watching this film, but not in the good way, in the way that I wanted to blow my own mind with a gun. Every minute, this movie will grind to a halt and stop and go, remember this? Do you, do you remember? Do you remember this? Remember? Look, it's the thing, <laughs> it's the thing you like. Look, it's Master Chief! The climactic battle sequence of this film has so much shit all over the screen that your brain can't focus on anything. Steven Spielberg wants you to turn your brain off. Don't think about it. Just let it turn to goopy mush. Your eyes can't focus on anything because the movie's going, Ninja Turtles! Gundam! It's fucking Chucky! Mecha Godzilla! Joker! It's an Overwatch! You get it. Bad. Bad. All round. Bad uses. Everywhere. It's a terrible film. It's a terrible movie. And if you like it, the only reason you like it is because of the nostalgia. And don't tell me it's not, because that's exactly why you like it. Alright? So don't watch. Just go away. Because you're lying to yourself. It's fine if you like it. But you're wrong. That's okay. It's okay to be wrong. I just don't like it. <laughs> This can be shown in a number of ways, but the most obvious and one of the most popular ways is just talking to the audience. One of the most famous uses of fourth wall breaking uh, can be found in the film Ferris Bueller's Day Off, where Ferris will talk directly to the audience, and in this film it is used exclusively for comedy. Incredible. One of the worst performances of my career, and they never doubted it for a second. Deadpool is probably the most famous fourth wall meta character in recent years. Ryan Reynolds will poke fun at the, you know, current terrible timeline that 20th Century Fox had for their characters and poke fun at that and not because there's no consistency in any of those movies. Let us go talk to the professor. McAvoy or Stewart, these timelines are so confusing. And I'm sure with him being absorbed by Disney, there's going to be plenty of commentary in his next film or his next character outing. So that's the first category of fan service. Get that out of here. Ugh, it's done. We're moving on to category number two. Now this is a big one and it is very important to a lot of people. This idea of bringing back a popular character from the past to reinvigorate the story can be incredibly exciting if done correctly, but with great power requires great... No, I know it. 
powerfulness. I love Arachnid Boy. If you reintroduce a character into a story, you have to make it interesting. If you do not, then what's the point? The only exception is if you use a returning character as merely a cameo that will not affect the story too much. If a character returns, it's not a cameo, and they have a big part in the story, and they are identical to when you last saw them. What's the point? You know? What is the point? I'm sure I'll catch some flack for this, as it is one of the most controversial uses of a returning character. That being... Star Wars Episode Eight. I know! Oh, shut up, losers! You don't have anything better to do? Get out of my house! The legendary character of Luke Skywalker returns in The Last Jedi as a jaded, disheveled, old, bitter man. He has written off the ideals of Jedi and the idea of being a hero. I love this version of Luke Skywalker. And you know what I would have hated? Is if he showed up as a creepy robot AI deepfake man. I would have hated that. What's that? Oh. Oh, that's the current Luke. Oh. Oh god. What should I do about him? The use of Luke in The Mandalorian Season 2 is one of the weirdest, creepiest looking things I've ever seen, and I hate looking at it. I hate gonna put it on screen. But it's awful looking. Look at it! The second one looks better, but not in motion, and it's mostly the sound in the second season. He sounds so creepy. Sometimes I wonder if his heart is in it. The use of Luke in The Mandalorian Season 2 doesn't bother me as much, because it's very much a cameo. It feels like a cameo, but in the book of Boba Fett, it feels like Disney's really wanting Luke to become a primary character that reoccurred, like keeps coming back. And he looks like this. And he sounds like this. Sometimes I wonder if his heart is in it. He's treated like the writer's favorite character in a fan fiction. This version of Luke needs to add something of interest to his personality or something. Just change something, because right now, the way it's going, people are going to lose interest. Many are already put off by the weird, stiff performance we're getting out of this current version of the character. A great use of a returning character as a cameo that works really well in its implementation is that of Yoda in The Last Jedi. This little weird creep shows up and gives Luke some grand words of wisdom, and this is expected from Yoda. He's portrayed in a very similar way that you would have seen him in the original trilogy, but that's okay because he's only used as a cameo. A cameo with importance, but he's not there to be a permanent character. The theme of the story is even delivered by Yoda because it makes sense in the story, and it makes sense that he would be the one delivering that theme. The greatest teacher failure is. Another recent but far more popular example would be that of Spider-Man No Way Home, in which all of the previous live-action Spider-Man come back in a fan service extravaganza. Most of the characters returning are given a lot of screen time, and they have plenty of things to do, and ways to interact with each other, and they're part of the story, and it makes sense within the story, everything meshes. There's also a lot of references to the previous series as well. You know, I'm something of a scientist myself. You know. I'm something of a scientist myself. These characters being included as a story element meshes with the overall direction and goal of the film itself. Now a poor use of a returning character can be found in another Star Wars property, it looks like this whole segment's just gonna be a lot of Star Wars, is that of The Book of Boba Fett. I'm not specifically talking about creepy weird Luke Skywalker. I'm talking about Cad Bane. In the second to last episode of the series, Cad Bane shows up in an intense western-styled standoff. The framing of the scene is very tense and atmospheric. He quick draws, blasts, and nearly kills one of the main characters, and he walks off into the sunset that episode, setting up a very intimidating villain. Then the next episode, he has two scenes and dies. Oh. That's it? Yeah, that's it. I have not watched The Clone Wars, but I know that's where this character originated from, and I know a lot of fans were pretty disappointed with this outing of this character, who's supposed to be a legendary bounty hunter, the most unstoppable, vicious 
killer out there, one of them at least. For him to have three scenes as one of the major villains at the end and then to just die in barely more than one episode. It is a bit of a bitter end to the character that people really liked. All right, we're moving on to category three. The one where if you type fan service into Google, it's all you're gonna get. And that's category number three, sexual fan service. When I began writing this video, I really didn't want to talk about this, but I also felt it would be disingenuous for me to talk about fan service without this element. Because when I was researching this video, I have to type fan service with very specific phrasing for it not to come up with stuff like this. Oh, perfect timing. Kinemon, he needs some clothes if you would. You sleep with me and Robin tonight. This anime is pretty good, but this girl's outfit is super annoying. The fan service is really obnoxious. Um, actually, the entire last half of the definition of fan service feels like it was made for anime. Anyone who has watched anime has most likely come across the obligatory beach episode. You know the one. The stakes are incredibly low, all the characters get together to play volleyball or sunbathe, and fan service ensues. One trope you'll see come up a lot is usually a, a male character will trip and fall onto the boobs of another character. And it's so funny. It's hilarious. I mean, hell, Joss Whedon used it twice. <laughs> These examples would be one of two types of sexual fan service, comedic and pleasure. These examples are comedic, where a sexual incident will be played off for laughs, and the tone usually implies this as well. This category is the one where I really can't divide it into good or bad. I don't love it, <laughs> to each their own. The more icky side of this sexually driven coin is the pleasure angle. Now, I don't mean it like that. I didn't mean that. I didn't mean it. <laughs> Fuck. In the Transformers films, the female main characters are filmed like they're there for a model shoot. There are a lot of anime with this as its main intention. You know, designed to be porn without technically being porn and is passed off as fan service. The technical term for this in anime is ecchi. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Ecchi? 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 Ecchi, I think. Ecchi. Although, ecchi pushes it, and it verges on basically being porn. One of my favorite things that I've seen used as technically sexual fan service is more of a subversion of that idea. In one of the best action movies ever made, Mad Max Fury Road, go see it if you haven't, after a sandstorm has nearly killed him and he's pulled himself out of the sand, stumbles across the war rig, walks up to it, he's dehydrated, he's dying, and he sees five scantily clad women, drinking water, and it zooms back to him, and you think for a second, oh, uh, he's being real creepy. And then it cuts back, and he's just focusing on the water, and he's really thirsty. <laughs> One of my absolute favorite examples can be found in an anime. Oh, look at that, I did my homework, I watched an anime. It can be found in the anime Another. Another is a horror anime that I watched with my sister when I think I was 12 years old. The obligatory beach episode popped up in the queue, we both rolled our eyes, you know, here we go. Everything you'd expect to see in a beach episode was there until the volleyball was knocked into the ocean. So one of the characters decides to go get it, and he swims out, and then it's really far, and he's having a hard time swimming. Like other characters on the beach don't realize that he's passed out in the water. Oh my gosh, he's gonna drown. And right before they come around to come get him, a speedboat pulls around the other side of the cove and does not see his body sitting in the water. And the speedboat approaches, and the boy that drowned gets sucked into the propellers and is eviscerated. All the rest of the characters watch in horror as their friend has been killed. Now maybe that's not a great use of sexual fan service. I would say there's probably not a great use of sexual fan service. My favorite type is where it subverts, and you think it's gonna do that, and it does something else. But hey, I'll take it. 
That's all the effort I'm going to put into this category. I don't want to sit around watching a bunch of sexual fan service. I've got better things to do. Sorry. So I sought out to make this video because fan service has become more and more pushed to the forefront of our media. And I wanted to know if it's good or bad. Fan service has always been around. Fan service will always be around. Because people love it. People love fan service. I love fan service. I had a huge grin on my face watching Spider-Man No Way Home. I broke down all the categories. I showed how to identify the different fan service. If it interferes with the story, it's bad. If it makes logical sense to be there, then it's good. Loose and fast rules. Not exactly a concrete science, but it's something. It's a start. I just think that we should expect more from the fan service we are given. We're all fans. We're all fans of something. I said a similar statement in my video game movie video that I made um, about how as long as you have creative and passionate people behind these projects, then there should not be an issue. Should not. Oh, thank you all so much for watching this video. I'm, I'm doing the outro thing. I mean, if you're feeling it, go ahead and leave a like, share it, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. I'd really appreciate that. You know, this YouTube thing, it's new. Thank you to everyone who's been here in those early stages where it's taken a while to build. I know my upload schedule has not been super consistent, but I'll get there. I'm working on it. I'm, kind of, I'm trying to find my rhythm right now. So thank you all for watching. See ya. What's the meme? Are they? I'm pointing at my lenses. Do with that what you will.